nossos amigos. Hello, my friends. May God bless you. May God bless you by opening your understanding. Opening your understanding so that your understanding may then instruct your soul. So that your soul will be able to enjoy the life, the abundant life which God has created in your body. Okay? Pay attention. God is a spirit, which means that God is wisdom. God is wisdom. God is knowledge. But he also has a soul. Did you know that? Did you know that God has a soul? Let me just disable the comments here so it doesn't distract you. So God has a soul. The pleasure we have in things, in food, for example, in enjoying a nice meal, that taste of the food that we have pleasure in our mouth, this is the soul that feels. Isn't it nice? The pleasure of being with your family, with your husband, your wife, everything within an order and, and discipline and harmony of everything that God has created. You have your family, your home, you have your bed of peace, you eat the bread of peace, the bread of the angels daily. All of this brings great pleasure to what? To the soul. So, when you hug someone and, and that person hugs you back, that pleasure of you hugging that someone, your son, your daughter, your parents, your mother, someone, when you hug that person, the person whom you love, and vice versa, then you feel pleasure in that, isn't it? The marital intimacy, it's a pleasure as well, which God gave to human beings. He gave spirit, he gave them a soul, and he gave a body. A trinity. And everything came from him. God is a spirit, but he has a soul. God feels pleasure as well. Did you know that? Did you know that God feels pleasure as well and he feels sad? Did you know that? Did you know? See that he says there, I dwell in a high and holy place. In short, I am okay, I'm fine up here. But I'm also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive, to give life to those who are contrite and humble in spirit. So God feels sadness. He has a soul. If he feels it, it's because he has a soul. He feels sadness with the human suffering. Yes, that's it. He has this sensibility before being arrested there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus said, my soul is extremely sorrowful to death, which means his soul was in deep sadness. So he knows what depression is, what sadness, anguish is. He knows what the souls suffer. In another moment when he came to Jerusalem, he cried. Jesus cried. You know that. Why did he cry? Because he had a soul. He has a soul. He knows of the suffering that we human beings go through here on earth. But he didn't plan that. He didn't plan the suffering. When he gave the Spirit, he gave as well the soul. 
So that man, see when he says there, it's not good for man to be alone. He knew this. So God created man after his own image and likeness and gave him a spirit, gave him a soul and a body. So when the soul is submissive to the spirit, which is wisdom, then the body will be grateful. And this is what happens when we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Our soul then submits itself to the wisdom, intelligence of the Spirit that God has given us, which, on the other hand, will submit himself to the Holy Spirit. And who will be grateful? The body, with pleasure. But see, yesterday we were speaking of the word that God said. God said that there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. Perhaps you even get shocked when you hear this because you're like, oh, come on, God doesn't give peace to the wicked. No, that's not what it is. He gives peace to everybody, everyone. But the wicked holds on to his emotions and uses it to do evil. The wicked has pleasure in doing evil, in perversity, in cruelty. For example, have you seen a bullfight? In a bullfight, they release a hungry bull, poor thing, and then a guy comes and kills that bull slowly. They kill the bull slowly just to give pleasure to the cruel audience around. The cruelty of man is great. Have you seen a rooster fight? Have you seen people sacrificing animals and making them fight amongst themselves? This is cruelty. Cruelty. You don't like that, do you? Who likes that? But those who are cruel, the wicked ones, they take the sensibility of their souls and apply it towards cruelty, towards evil and perversity. And God hasn't given us a soul to do evil or to feel pleasure in evil. God gave us a soul so we can feel pleasure in everything he created, in all that is good. But man, out of disobedience to the word of God, became rebellious to the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, to the Word of God, and consequently they started to harvest the fruit of their rebellion. And the same thing happens when your soul is rebellious against your spirit. Your spirit says, look, don't get involved with this person. They are someone who is, has no rules, no discipline. They have no time to get up, no time to eat. They have no time for anything. They follow the desires of their soul. They follow the desire of their heart, the lusts of their heart. And then you say, oh, but she's so beautiful. Your soul says, your heart says, but she's so beautiful. She's so nice. She looks, she seems to be so nice. And you insist. So you end up marrying that person. What do you think will happen in your marriage? It's going to be hell. You are going to go through hell in that marriage. That's the reality. And who can stop you from doing that? Only when you listen, when your spirit, your intelligence, your thoughts, they listen to the word of God, they obey his word, going against the soul that wants the things of the flesh, and then you are free from this, this soul that is lustful, the soul that is greedy, that desires evil, you are free from that soul. 
and then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and directs your spirit, and your spirit directs your soul, and your body will be very grateful. That's what happened to me. That's what's been happening to all those who are submitting themselves to the Word of God. Look at what the text says. The biblical text, the Word of God, it says like this, For I, God, have no pleasure in the death of one who dies. God has no pleasure in the death, not even of the wicked that dies, of those who are cruel and, and evil. He has no pleasure in their death. But what can he do? He can only do one thing. He says, Therefore, turn and live. To turn means to convert, which is you are going towards the north side and you make a an 180 degree turn and you start going south or vice versa. You are going towards a direction and you make an 180 degree turn and you go to the other side, which means you are going towards evil and you know you are going towards the path of evil, but you convert. You say, no, the word of God says I shouldn't go towards this way. So let me go back and go towards evil. That is your mind, your intelligence that says that, your intellect, your thought. Your thought, this thought is, is what combines with the thoughts of God. When you convert, that's it. You start having life indeed, because your soul then is submissive to divine intelligence, and consequently your body will be very grateful. Did you understand the chemistry? Are you following the chemistry of faith, God's chemistry? This is what He wants for you. He did not create all the beauty and greatness of nature. He didn't create the animals. He didn't create anything to cause us damage or sadness. No, He only created what is good. Everything He created was good. It was good and it is good. However, unfortunately, disgracefully, the greed of the soul of a person who does not reason, who doesn't think as God does, ends up carrying that person towards death and eternal death. This is the reality. Therefore, my friend, think, meditate, reason, use your thoughts, your mind according to God's thoughts, not according to my thoughts or the thoughts of the Universal Church. No, use your mind, your thoughts, according to the thoughts of the Holy Scriptures, of the Bible. By the way, in our Bible, the Bible that the, the Church adopted, the New King James Version, this Bible perhaps is even a bit more difficult for you to read, but we have there our comments, our comments that explains many things which will help you understand the Word of God. Read the Bible, my friend, and it will teach you, guide you in the path of life. Look at what God says here in Proverbs. It's very nice. This is great. It says like this, Proverbs, let me open it here and read it for you. Proverbs, chapter 18, and verse 2, it says like this. Look how nice. Look at what a magnificent thing. It says, a fool, a fool, a fool is a person that contradicts wisdom. A fool is that person that walks in the path of this world, of the flesh, of the desires of the flesh, of the desires of the soul. It says, a fool 
In other words, let me use a clearer English. A dumb person, a person who is dumb, who is stupid, has no delight in understanding. Did you know that? It says here, a fool has no delight in understanding. What is understanding? It's the word of God. Only the word of God is understanding. The word of the world, the word of man is nothing. Only the word of God is, is wise. A fool has no pleasure in reading the word of God. This is it. But in expressing his own heart. The heart is the soul. The heart is the symbol of the soul. A fool has no pleasure in understanding, or a dumb person has no pleasure, no delight in understanding, but only in expressing his own heart. And that's why this world is a disgrace, it's upside down, and that is why many are called, but few are chosen. Because people do not want to use their intelligence, the intelligence God has given them. Unfortunately, that's it. I think and I hope that you have understood this message. Read it again as many times as necessary so the penny can drop. And then you, by yourself, on your own, may have the understanding, the discernment to know how to choose the path that you need to follow so that you may have the pleasure of everything that God created. Hallelujah. Thank God. This week, we continue in the campaign on behalf of the soul. If you are suffering and you want help, go to any universal church of the kingdom of God. There will be people available, assistants, pastors, auxiliary pastors who will be there able to help any time of the day or the night or better of the day at night only on the radio on tv and so on so 24 7 we are there uninterruptedly bringing the word of wisdom to those who are unfortunately living according to the foolishness of this life may god bless you all and i'll see you tomorrow in jesus name amen